at this point in the trial, people normally would bring their family in, their kids. I mean, you've seen it. Normally in our modern courtroom, people do this during the, senten the sentencing stage of the trial. You know, people will bring in their mom. And what does mom usually do if some her son just got convicted of murder and, and the penalty stage is now up? I mean, what does the mom normally do? Usually starts crying, right? Oh, he was such a good boy. I don't know what happened. Tears coming down. Now, why would they bring the mom in to go through that pain? They just don't bring the mom in. They bring in the wife. They'll bring in the kids. I mean, they'll bring in different people. Some guy's convicted. Maybe some kid was in a, some guy was in a gang. He gets convicted for murder. And so they bring in, he, he's found guilty and they bring in the mother. They bring in all these people and they're crying. And he was such a good kid. We don't know what happened. He's a good person. We, he should have leniency, have mercy on, on my son, have mercy on him. What, who they don't bring in is the guy's gang member friends. You think they're going to bring them in? Now, why wouldn't they bring those people in to give testimony? Because it's not going to be very helpful. Because at, normally at this stage of the trial, you are trying to elicit some sort of pity for the person so that the judge and the jury can go lenient on the sentencing. Socrates is going to have none of this. Socrates is not going to try to elicit some sort of pity. He's not going to try to appeal to the pity of the jury. He wants the jury to make their decision based on reason alone. He says, he brought his children and many of his friends and family into court to arouse as much pity as he's could. He's talking about what people normally do, but that I do none of these things, even though I may seem to be running the ultimate risk. He is running the ultimate risk because these people are going to try to put him to death. 